at the ways you can extend BigCommerce for WordPress by creating your own custom plugin. Before getting into any custom code of our own, let's look at the source of BigCommerce for WordPress itself. The main plugin file, bigcommerce.php, serves three important purposes. First, it registers the primary activation hook that is run during plugin install. Second, it calls the initialization function during the plugin's loaded action in WordPress. Third, it provides a BigCommerce function that we can call anywhere to access the main instance of BigCommerce. The BigCommerce init function offers its own action hook that we can safely utilize to trigger our own plugin's functionality. Notice that this hook name begins with the prefix BigCommerce and a forward slash. Every hook throughout the plugin uses this prefix to make them easy to find and identify. Now, before we go any further, it seems prudent to provide our universal warning. Modifying core plugin functionality can lead to security vulnerabilities, data corruption, broken user workflows, and an overall unpleasant experience. So proceed at your own risk. Next, take a look at the directory structure of the plugin. All of the template components for both the admin area and the front end are in the templates directory. And we've discussed custom templating in another video. All of the core functionality is inside the source directory. It's further subdivided by responsibility. The directory structure follows the plugin namespacing for easy auto loading. Let's say we want to manipulate the default customer group information in our customer accounts. We can find the code that controls this inside the accounts directory. And here is a file named customer group. Conveniently, we find a filter hook named bigcommerce slash customer slash group underscore info. And we can use this to override details about the group. Now, one more thing while we're in the code. Let's look at the class that controls the main plugin instance and get a sense of what it provides to us. We'll find this in the plugin.php file. The very first property we see is the plugin version. Now, this will be helpful in our own plugins anytime we need to check which version of BigCommerce for WordPress is running. The last plugin detail I want to point out in this video is the load service providers method. This method registers all of the components we saw in the directory list a moment ago and makes them available to us as properties of the main plugin instance. For example, we could access the cart service by calling the BigCommerce function, a single arrow, and the property name cart. Below the services list is a filter hook that we can use to register our own service providers or override any of the core files. With this information in hand, Let's get started making our own custom plugin. Here I have a bare bones outline for a new plugin. I have one function that hooks to the BigCommerce init action, and it's responsible for loading the rest of our plugin's functionality. This function checks the current version of BigCommerce to make sure it meets our minimum requirements. If it doesn't, we display an error and deactivate the plugin. There isn't much else happening in this plugin at the moment, just a few comments. But if we go back to the plugin header, you can see that this plugin's purpose is to hide product categories based on customer group access. The comments after our init function describe all of the things we need to do in order to produce this behavior. Thanks to the extensible nature of BigCommerce for WordPress, you'll see that we don't have too many steps. Follow along in the next video to see how we write the functionality to complete this custom plugin.